All right, we're trying a different leather jacket this time. It's a little bit tighter, so we'll see how I do. We think about routing on the internet as happening between computers that are connected to the internet, and that's true. But routing is also done in a hierarchical way that reflects the structure of the internet itself, because the internet isn't just one big computer network. The internet is a network of computer networks. Each network that's part of the internet is independently operated, and those networks cooperate using the IP protocol to move data from one side of the earth to the other. One way that we refer to these independently operated computer networks, particularly when we're talking about routing, is as an autonomous system, or AS. Because routing is really done at a level that spans autonomous systems, and then within each autonomous system itself. So let's talk about that. Um, so rather than looking at these nodes, let's reflect each one of these nodes as a computer network. Now those computer networks are operated by different entities. This one might be the computer network that's operated here at the University of Buffalo. This might be something like uh, a computer network operated by a big ISP like level three or whatever. So in order to, now if I'm communicating with a computer that's within my own autonomous system, all of that communication and all of the network configuration and all the network maintenance that's, re that's required to route within a particular autonomous system is the responsibility of the company that maintains this network. So UB's network engineers are responsible for stringing the cables and configuring things and stuff like that. So all of that network operation is up to them. It's only once traffic leaves UB's network and heads out across the broader internet that things start to get more interesting. So let's say I'm connected to UB's network, and I want to communicate with a computer that's located over here, and let's say this is Stanford or something like that. So this is the other side of the country, and how does this work? So the first thing that happens is that my packet has to get out of UB's network. The way it does that is it finds a, config, uh, a computer at UB that's been configured to route traffic across the broader internet. And this configuration, again, is entirely UB's responsibility. Once it reaches this router, then what the routers start to do is they start to cooperate. These autonomous systems are cooperating to move the packet toward the destination autonomous system, which in this case is Stanford's network. So in this case, it might cross level three and maybe across to some other ISP. And finally, it's going to be delivered to the router that Stanford has set up to handle traffic that's either arriving at or departing from its autonomous system. Once it arrives here, it probably has to go a few more hops to get to its destination, uh, which is over here actually, so it went the wrong way. But it has to ride, do a few more hops to get to its destination, and this configuration is again the responsibility of Stanford. So this is how these independently owned and operated computer networks cooperate in order to route traffic. And this reflects the fact that there's really this two-step routing process. So first I do routing within my autonomous system, then I do routing across the autonomous systems, and when the packet arrives, then uh, there's some more routing that happens within the autonomous system. So this model is really a nice way to remember the fact that the internet is not just one big network. It's a network of computer networks that have all agreed to cooperate, speak one common protocol, which is IP, in order to allow traffic to cross the globe to originate at any network that's connected to the internet and arrive at any other network that's connected to the internet. What's the problem with this jacket? It is too tight. Ah, whew. I think I lost a few pounds getting that jacket off.